Hi, everybody. Hi, Alan. Hi, Liz. Hi, Francis. Hi, Caroline. Morning, everybody. I'm sorry, I was trying to get the laptop balanced on top of the cushion, so it was a little bit higher. I hope everybody's okay this morning. If anyone wants to just give Rose a quick text to ask if she can see the, uh, the link, that would be lovely. She's been struggling to, to get hold of it. I think she doesn't know that she needs to refresh the Facebook um, group. I think she's been sitting waiting to see it. So. Ah, it's lovely to see all these uh, names popping up. That's great. I'm loving how we're all connecting every day and um, and having lots of Zoom conversations as well. So I hope that you feel that um, it's really encouraging you as well when we do the morning bell and, um, and get together on a Sunday morning as well. I'm just going to wait a minute. I think there's quite a few people joined us. Right, let's get started because it's after 9.30, isn't it? So um, I had um, I'd gone down the garden um, because we'd, years and years ago we planted lots of bulbs, daffodil bulbs, and, um, and obviously it's always lovely when they come up every spring. And every year we've planned, or in my head, I've planned to take photographs of, of the children in, in amongst the daffodils and every year I go out and I think must do that must do that and then more often than not forget but so even though our children are now 18 and 20 we've probably got five or six photographs of them in amongst the daffodils if that um, and this year I thought really must take a photograph of them because they're not usually at home now they're normally at university and the spring times that they're both home together will be few and far between and it's such a an unusual time must take a photograph and last week i went down the garden it was really early in the morning and um and when i got down i was so disappointed because all the daffodils were lying flat and they were all bent over and i thought oh no i've missed my opportunity you know and i was kicking myself really um thinking how forgetful i am <laughs> and how rubbish i am at that and um and they were all lying down apart from one patch of daffodils. And I came back inside the house and I made a cup of tea, had a cup of tea. And then I thought, hang on a minute, the one patch of daffodils that weren't lying down were actually catching the first rays of the sun uh, from of the morning. So I thought, I'll just nip out and check because rather than dying, maybe they were just lying down. And when I went out, all the daffodils were standing tall, standing proud, basking in the warmth of the sun, um, really beautiful and really fresh. And it just reminded me, I've got some daffodils here. I went out to collect some this morning. Um, it just reminded me that actually we can wilt at times and what we need to do is bask in the warmth of the sun, but not in the sun in the sky, but in Jesus, God's Son, we need to bask in his warmth and the warmth of our Heavenly Father. And so this morning is all about looking up. And I don't know about you, but as time goes on in this really weird period of self-isolation and social distancing and, you know, the illness that can be around, um, we're beginning to wilt a little. And that's okay. It's okay to wilt and to feel a bit fed up or frustrated. For many of us, there may be less people in our homes 
and we might be feeling lonely. For other people like us, there are more people in our house at the moment and we're working out a new normal. Lots of people are having to work from home and that doesn't mean to say that they're getting any downtime. It means they're working really hard, but it's hard to concentrate. So everything is up in the air and different and we're using a lot more emotional energy, if not physical energy as well. Um, and so it's natural that we might wilt. So really this morning, I'd just like to encourage us all, including myself, that we do need to look up to our Heavenly Father for comfort. And just like a, a young child, when they're feeling tired and they're needing a nap and they're getting all um, crotchety, uh, they might go to a parent and need a cuddle and need to be lifted up and to be told it's okay, have a little nap, have a rest. And then they're all fired up and they can run off and get on with what they're doing. And our Father God wants that of us. He wants, he understands how we're feeling and uh, wants to give us that comfort. But also we really need to look up because, you know, we need to look into, look forward and upwards at the sun be for guidance and for just clarity and for reassurance. And if we think about all he has created in this world, um, if we focus on his amazing creation and if he's created, I'm looking out of our window now and there are birds in the tree, you know, if he cares for the sparrow and provides a home for them, he does the same for us and he loves us unconditionally. So a few verses here to inspire us. In Psalms, it says in Psalm 95, for the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. There are so many. Psalm 104, how many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things, both large and small. And regarding lifting up, Isaiah 40, 26 says, Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all of these? Who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each one of them by name? Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. And we know that, you know, um, he cares for us and he, he created the world for us to live in and for us to take care of. Psalm 8 says, Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? It's just fantastic to know that our Creator God loves his world but loves us even more. So let's look up to him today and keep our eyes focused on him. The other thing that I was thinking about looking up is so we can gain our comfort from God by looking to him as our father. We can look up and see the beauty of his creation and continue to praise him through the times that we feel we're wilting or the times when we're worrying about our families and friends and our own situation. But we also need to look up so that we can look out um, <clears throat> In Threshold, sorry, where's my tea? In Threshold, we're connected with lots of people in different countries. Um, we have connections with people in Burundi, in Kenya, in Thailand, in India, in Ghana. And those people are going through similar situations. And we need to look out to what's happening in the rest of the world and to really lift those people in those situations um, before God. We were chatting to Pastor John in Ghana, although he's actually in Namibia at the moment, but we were talking about um, 
the situation in Ghana, which is the same in so many other countries. Um, he was saying how, you know, people are so worried about what's going to happen. They may not, they don't have as many um, cases of the virus at the moment, but for countries in, in Africa uh, and other places around the world where people live in extended family groups, how can they isolate themselves from one another? They live in close confines. They live in countries where they can't go out to a supermarket and buy food and keep it and store it in a fridge. They have to go to a market each day. But in many countries now, the governments have said the markets have to be closed. So what do people do for food? What do they do to isolate themselves from other members of their family? And also healthcare systems are so different to ours. Um, he was, Pastor John was saying how there aren't ventilators in the hospitals. And for anyone who's visited any hospitals in, in other countries, um, you know how basic uh, the supplies are, the conditions are. So we need to lift our heads and we're going to pray later so that um, for people in other countries um, that are so different to our own. So we need to uh, stand firm shoulder to shoulder with our friends and others who are in other countries. And also think about people who are in the refugee camps at present, who've gone through so much already. Um, we need to plead to God on their behalf for their safety. So just as the daffodils need to spend time in the warmth of the sun, we need to spend time in the warmth of the sun and Jesus, God's son. And, um, and let's look to him for comfort. Let's look to him in order to pray for one another. But also let's look up so that we can just praise him and worship him um, and offer him everything that we've got and trust in him that he will see everyone through this difficult time. And we don't have it as difficult as so many other people, do we? Um, if, if what m the majority of us need to do is stay at home, then that's something we can, we can do. I was also thinking about um, what we've heard in previous days and Anna was encouraging us to sing yesterday. And we do, we need to sing his praises. We need to worship him in song, but also by um, in our actions, in what we do at home, in how we can serve others, even when we're isolated, just by dropping people um, a line, phoning people up, having a Zoom conversation with friends that we might not have seen or heard from for a while. And let's try and remember people in the congregation or in our communities who might not, uh, we might not have been in touch with for a while and just get in touch somehow to check that they're okay to encourage them i was thinking about um i can't remember who who wrote this song but you know the song god i look to you um i won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things as you do god i look to you you're where my help comes from give me wisdom you know just what to do so that's giving our cares and concerns to him and looking to him and trusting him. But the chorus is, hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns forever, all my days, hallelujah. So let's turn any concerns and worries we have for ourselves, for our family, for our friends, for our nation, for other nations, and turn those concerns into praises and singing hallelujah so let's um i'll lead us in some prayer now and then we'll say the lord's prayer together heavenly father this morning we want to choose to look to you some of us may be feeling weary some of us may be feeling okay today but we all want to choose to look up to you as a source of our comfort, as a source of encouragement, but also, Heavenly Father, 
once we've done that, we want to be able to run away like a child who has renewed energy, to be able to serve you, to help others, to be able to then praise you. In fact, we need to praise you first and foremost, Lord. Praise you for all you have done, all you have given us, for the safety of our own homes. And this morning, Heavenly Father, we want to lift other people to you. Lord, we pray for those who we know who are working in the NHS and who are key workers, people who are working for home and have great responsibility and are trying to work things out financially uh, for other people, for, the, for their employees. Lord, be with them. Lord, we want to bring to you this morning our friends and family in other nations. We ask your protection over those we love who are in countries that are much more vulnerable because of the way that they live, because of their weather conditions, uh, the way that their society lives. We pray protection for our friends in Burundi, Kenya, India, Thailand and Ghana. We ask for your provision that people would have enough food. You would protect their health so that they wouldn't succumb to the coronavirus. Lord, put your protective guard, your angels, around the homes of the people who we know and their loved ones. Hedge them in, Heavenly Father, we pray, and protect people from this virus. And Lord God, together we look forward to a day when we can all praise you together in one room and just be able to have the freedom to travel to see those who we love who are in other countries. But together this morning, we want to raise a hallelujah, um, another great song that someone's written, um, looking to you. We want to raise that hallelujah this morning and say, our God reigns forever. And we will praise you all of our days. Amen. Sorry, I went on a bit there. But praying's a good thing to do, isn't it? But let's all finish this morning's morning bell by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I hope everyone has a great day. I really hope that people aren't feeling that they're wilting and that they're able to stand tall and proud and majestic like a daffodil looking up at the sun and um, we look forward to seeing whoever it is tomorrow on Morning Bell and uh, being together on Sunday. Have a good day everyone.